Hi everyone, Mr. C here with a projectile motion example problem for you guys. So for today's objective, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the range, the maximum height, and the time in the air of a fired projectile. Alright, so here's the question we're going to work on. A soccer ball is kicked off the ground with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second at an angle of 35, oh, I'm sorry, 30 degrees to the horizontal. We're going to calculate the total time the ball is in the air, the maximum height the ball reaches, the range, i.e. the uh, horizontal distance the ball travels, what angle the ball should have been kicked at if the player <clears throat> wished to achieve a greater range, and what if she wanted the ball to be in the air for the most time possible? What angle would she have to kick it at then? So here's a sketch of the problem. I always start my problems with a sketch. Um, it really makes these projectile problems easy to understand. So we have here the foot kicking the ball, we see that the projectile is launched with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. And if you see here, I've drawn my components, and I'm going to go ahead and label them. So the component on the bottom on the x-axis is my, ver my horizontal component. I call that vx. And the vertical component, because it's the initial velocity, I call that viy. And you see here, um, these are at right angles to each other, so we already see that triangle we've, we've begun. I'm also going to dissect the problem, and I'm going to note this spot right here, this is going to be an important part in the problem. You guys will remember that this is the place where maximum height occurs, so I'm going to call that dy for my maximum height. And I'm also going to list the range. I'm going to draw an arrow all the way from the beginning to the end, and I'm going to call that dx. Now, as I always do, I always start my problems by drawing a table with my x and y components. So on my, my x side, we have dx. We know that when the ball is kicked, nothing is influencing it in the horizontal direction because gravity is only pulling it down in the vertical direction, so it's moving at a constant speed, so I'm going to call that Vx. And of course we have time down here in the bottom. In the vertical direction, we have dy, viy, the initial velocity in the vertical direction, vfy, which we'll define later, and of course we have an acceleration going on, which is gravity, so 9.81 meters per second squared. So the first thing I want to do with these projectile motion problems is if you see we have this triangle here, we're going to go ahead and break that triangle up into its components. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and redraw the triangle. Here's my 25 meters per second, angle of 30 degrees, tip to tail it. So I have Vx and Viy. And you remember from your physics formulas or from doing trig, we know that Vx is going to be Vi cos theta, so it's 25 cosine 30 degrees. And Viy is going to be 25 times the sine of 30 degrees. And when you go ahead and do that, you get a Vx of Vx equals 21.65 meters per second. And we know the sine of 30 is 1 half, so Viy is 12.5 meters per second. And so then what I do is I go ahead and I put those right in my table. So Viy is 12.5 meters per second, and Vx is 21.65 meters per second. And now I'm going to go ahead and label my unknowns. So we're trying to solve for Dx, we're trying to solve for Dy, and we're trying to solve for time. And so the process of solving these problems is, an, is just figuring out one thing to solve for and then filling in the rest of the table. So now we go back to the problem. Remember that I said <coughs> up here at the top is a very important spot because we know it's the max height. What we learned about in classes, we know that the velocity in the vertical direction at the very top is zero. So what I'm going to do for this problem is I'm going to call that VFY for now because I'm going to call my initial right when the ball's kicked, VIY, and I'm going to solve the problem solving for the time it takes to get from the bottom up here to the top. So my VFY I'm going to call at the top. I'm going to say that's zero. So let's go ahead and solve for time. So I know I have VFY, I have VIY, I have acceleration, and I'm solving for time. The correct equation to choose is VF equals VI plus AT, and I go ahead and I plug in. Zero equals 12.5 meters per second plus negative 9.81 meters per second squared 
times time. I go ahead and I subtract over my 12.5 and I divide by negative 9.81 and I get a time of t equals 1.274 seconds. And again, that represents the time it takes to go up. t equals 1.274 seconds. Well, we know then the total time to go up and down because it starts and ends from the same height is that it takes the exact same amount of time to go down. So our total time in the air then is just double uh, 1.274 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and double 1.274 and I get a time of 2.55 seconds. And we know whatever time we solve for in the y component, we can use in the x component. So now I've solved for time. And you can see here, now I have my two knowns and my one unknown, the x on this side. And I have all these knowns on this side. And I have my one unknown here. And so now the rest of the problem is just go ahead and finding the correct physics equations to solve for each variable. So I'll go ahead and I'll solve for max height first. And again, just recall, we have VIY equals 12.5 meters per second. VFY at the max height equals zero. We now have a time of T equals 1.274 seconds, because that's the time from VIY to VFY. And we have acceleration equals gravity. So the equation I'm going to use for this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the problem at the very top when our velocity is zero. I'm going to calculate the distance the ball falls to the ground because the distance the ball fa falls is the same the distance it rises. So because it's starting at an initial velocity in the y direction is zero, I can use our old buddy d equals one half at squared. So dy equals one half gravity times a time down of 1.274 seconds squared. And I go ahead and I get a dy, so this is our max height, of 7.96 meters. Go ahead and try the calculation yourself. Make sure you get the same thing. Okay, now the final thing I'm going to calculate today is the range. And again, that's, in, that's the horizontal, so that's dx. And remember that because the ball is moving at a constant velocity in the x direction, the only equation we'll ever use is vx equals dx divided by t. So if our velocity was 21.65 meters per second, we'll set that equal to dx. And because the ball is in the air for the entire time, so up and down, we use our total time, 2.55 seconds. Cross multiplying, solving, I get dx equals 55.2 meters. Hey, that's not a bad kick. That's about half a. That's a, just about half a soccer field. Not bad at all. Now, if you'll recall, the very last questions I asked were, what angle should the ball have been kicked at if the player wished to achieve a greater range? Recall from class what we defined as the angle for greatest range. If we neglect air resistance and if the ball starts and ends at the same height, we learned that 45 degrees is that magic angle. So, if the soccer player would have kicked it at about a 15 degree higher angle, it would have gone further without her having to kick it any harder at all. And if she wanted the, the ball to be in the air for the most time possible, we know the ball is going to be go the highest in the air and be in the air for the most time when she kicks it straight up. So in math, what we define as straight up is 90 degrees. And there you have it. We've uh, solved a pretty good example of a projectile motion problem. Hope this helps you guys out. I'll be back for more problems later. See ya.